All right, NFL Week 4. Let's go through some of these games, shall we? Welcome back. It's Coast to Coast Sports. My name is Levi. We're talking Bills-Ravens to start things off in a game that I really wish was close, man. And, and Buffalo, they started. They, they had a nice little drive. They made a fourth down. Um, but they were no match. They were no match for Baltimore. Um, it was 7-3, 14-3, 21-3. I mean, the game got out of hand very quickly. Final score, 30-13. to Lamar looked like a star. And remember, this is the Bills. That we said last week the Bills might be one of the five best teams in football. They looked terrible against a 1-2 and two Ravens team. And the Ravens, I, I think it's fair to say they're back. Um, I'm, I'm happy I didn't totally give up on them. Um, I'll admit, after they lost to the Raiders, I was pretty low on them. I said I thought they'd miss the playoffs. I, I'm back on the Ravens. I think they will make the playoffs. I don't know if they win the division. Um, I think Pittsburgh and, and Cincinnati is going to be in the mix as well. Um, neither of those teams are dead. You know, The Ravens and the Bengals have life. The Steelers just lost. So they, they, the, the, the division's going to get close. Um, and we'll see. Baltimore, pro- they, they can definitely win it. I mean, it's not a matter of if they can. I don't know if they will. They totally can. They're a talented uh, football team. Derrick Henry's a game changer. Uh, the, the 80, I think it was like an 80-yard rush to open up their second drive. I mean, it, it, or no, their first drive, to open up their first drive. Um, and, and Buffalo just didn't have an answer. They didn't have an answer for Lamar. They didn't have an answer for Derrick Henry. They just kind of rolled over and died. Uh, they gave up early, um, and it, it was it was tough. It was a hard game to watch from a fan perspective because you knew the entire time, basically, that Baltimore was going to win. Uh, so they now have two quality wins. They win over Dallas, a win over Buffalo. It was a tough schedule, you know. And I think I think that if you were to tell Baltimore, you play Kansas City. Dallas and the Chiefs in your first four weeks, I think they would take two and two. Now, they may have expected to lose to Buffalo and beat the Raiders, you know, but I think ultimately you, you, you look at that and say it was a tough four game stretch. Las Vegas is two and two, so you, they, they played every team they faced is at least a 500 football team, right? The Raiders are two and two, the Cowboys are two and two. The Chiefs are undefeated, and the Bills are 3-1. and one. They played four teams that are at least 500, two of them that are better, and they came away winning two of those games. That's, a, that, 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 that's fine. You can do that. Um, now, the problem for them is the schedule does not get much easier. The schedule is pretty hard, but as long as you go about 500 against the good teams and they win the easy ones, they can win 10 games. They can be a playoff team. I think they will be. Um, as far as the Bills go, I'm still, I mean, they're, they're even in the loss. I think they're the better team in that division. The Jets didn't play well either. We'll get to them in a little bit. Uh, but again, let's temper our expectations. They fool us like this every year. They go 3-0. and Josh Allen looks like a star. And then they fall apart in a few games. And this is one of those fall apart games. The Bills are not good playing from behind. Josh Allen is notoriously not good playing from behind. We saw that again on Sunday night. Kansas City, meanwhile, taking down the Chargers, one of the two undefeated teams left in the NFL. And and look, you can scoff at the Chiefs all you want because they haven't looked great in any of their four wins. The key is there's only two 4 no teams in this league. It's not easy to win. (coughs) Excuse me. It's not easy to win this many games in the National Football League. And the Chiefs did it. They came back. They were down 10-0, and they won 17-10. Their defense looks legitimately like it could be a top five top three unit in the league and Mahomes is doing what they need to do to win um is it perfect football no but is it good enough yes Travis Kelsey has saw a little bit more action today he he caught some passes did a little bit more um I think we're gonna start to see a, a lot more of him as the season goes on but um the key for the Chiefs is as long as you have Mahomes and that defense, they are turning into the Patriots, where they're a defense-first team. I'm shocked Steve Spagnola hasn't been hasn't been snapped up by another team. Honestly, like if I was the Ravens or or the Bills or 
the Bengals, see, the problem is they don't need new head coaches. But I think the best strategy long term to beat the Chiefs might be to break up that coaching staff because Reed and Spagnola are so just, they're, they're just so tight together. They know exactly what they're doing. And it's, it's gotten to a point where I, I think that as long as Spagnola is their defensive coordinator, their defense is going to be able to win them these games. And then you got Mahomes doing his thing. He does just enough for them to win every single week. Falcons are 2-2, two and two, the Ravens are 2-2, two and two, the Chargers are 2-2, two and two, and the Bengals are 1-3. and three. So they've beaten four teams with a combined record of 7-9. and nine. But if you remove the four losses from the Chiefs, the four teams they beat, 7-5. and five. So they've beaten four teams that are a combined winning team unless they're playing Kansas City, in which case they're a losing team. And they beat teams up, and they don't hold back. That's Kansas City football. The Chargers will be fine. They're going to be in the playoffs. Um, they, they will be fine. But right now, the story is Kansas City is just that good. They, they have a bye next week, which is lucky for them. Because a lot of teams, every team I think, no, not the Falcons, but most teams after they play the Chiefs, it's like the Niners. The Niners, the Chiefs, and the Ravens are the three teams that are like this. where when you play them, the week after you play them, teams tend to lose after you play them. So it's not even one loss. It's like a, you lose twice because you're so ba- banged up and you're so just downtrodden because of the loss that you're going to lose again the next week. That's how the Patriots used to be. It's how the Niners are now. It's how the Chiefs are and the Ravens last year. Those are the three teams like that. The Chargers get lucky. They have a bye next week. They'll be fine. After the bye, they got Denver, they should win. Arizona, winnable game, they should win that. New Orleans, winnable game. Cleveland, winnable game. Tennessee, winnable game. And then Cincinnati, we'll see how they're playing at that point. On paper, looks like a winnable game. So they have, the Chargers have six winnable games coming up after this. They will be fine. They'll probably go 4-2 and two or 5-1. and one in that stretch, and then they finish the season with a bit of a tougher stretch. Baltimore, Atlanta, Kansas City, Tampa. That's a tough four-game stretch. But then their last three games, they got Denver, New England, and the Raiders. So they're, I think they'll be a playoff team because they have six easy games coming up. If they win four of those, they'll be, they'll be six and four. Then you got a tough four-game stretch. Let's say they win one of those. Now you're seven and seven, but then you close the season with Denver, Raiders and uh, and Patriots. You should win all three of those games. That puts you at ten wins, and you're a playoff team, right there. Um, and who knows? They 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 could get upsets. They look close. I'll tell you what. They look close enough that they could totally. They can hang with the Chiefs. They could beat them next time they play. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'll bet on it, but they could. Now, as far as good teams go, it, it can be hard to, to figure out who are the good teams in the league. I think Tampa's a legitimately a, gr- a really good football team. And I wasn't sold on them in the preseason. You know, they won nine games last year. They won the division, but I wasn't sold on them. Even when, with the playoff win, I wasn't sold on Baker. I thought, I think he's inconsistent. I still kind of feel that way. You know, the loss to the Broncos shows you that he's inconsistent. But right now, this year, Tampa Bay, only team with multiple wins against winning teams. They beat the Commanders week one. We forget this. They beat the Commanders. Since then, the Commanders are the hottest team in the league, three and one and on a roll. And they also beat um, a three and one, or a two and one Detroit team that I think will win tonight. So if Detroit wins, that'll mean Tampa has beaten two three and one teams, and then they beat the two and two Eagles who I think are good. I don't think the Eagles are great, but I think they're a good team. So Tampa will officially be, they will have beaten three of the better teams in the NFC. Not only is that huge for tiebreakers come playoffs, when I I do believe that the Eagles will be in the playoffs and the Commanders, the Lions, I think those are might all, they might all three be playoff teams. The Commanders look like a playoff team right now. 
So the Tampa the Buccaneers already have tiebreakers now. It's also great for their division. I mean, they had they maybe had the best day because not only did they get a resounding dominant victory over a good team, they also got to sit back and watch as the Saints and Falcons duked it out in a battle of who sucked less. I mean, I, I think ultimately the Falcons winning is good for them because the Saints, if they had won, they'd be tied. So now the Bucks have sole possession of first place, but I don't think the Falcons scared them. And I don't think the Saints scared them. I mean, the Falcons, if not for a fluky, re- I mean, really, the Falcons are very lucky to have two wins because their first win came off of the luckiest drive in history against this Eagles team. That game with the Falcons, we'll talk about it in a sec, but they did not deserve to win that game. So Tampa, it's got to be feeling great. Like our biggest opponent is the Saints and Falcons, the Saints who are super inconsistent, and the Falcons who could be 0-4 if not for literally two plays. So I think Tampa might feel really good, and I think they're legit. Um, And if they played in the playoffs, I'd take them to beat the Eagles. I'd take them to beat Detroit again. I'd take them to beat Green Bay. I think I'd take them over Minnesota. I don't know if there's any team in the NFC that I would take right now over the Bucks, except for maybe the Commanders. And I think, uh, I think Tampa Bay could ha- legitimately be Super Bowl contenders. We'll see where I put them in my power rankings. I think this team could represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. I'm not, I'm being completely serious. And a month ago, I wasn't sure if they would win the division. I picked the Falcons to win that division. I think Tampa looks a lot better. They look more consistent, which I was worried about. And at their best, they are clearly better. Now, at their worst, Tampa's not good because at their worst, Baker turns into a pumpkin. But at their best, they look like a dominant powerhouse of a team. So I think Tampa right now, they might have, they may have overtaken Detroit for me as far as power rankings go. I think they might be the best team in the NFC. But okay, let's talk about that Saints Falcons game because that was that was sad. That was it was kind of tough to watch. Um, the Saints, they are not a good team, and they, they they fooled us. They played a bad Dallas team that I don't think is all is all that good, and they played a a terrible Panthers team, and they looked so dominant. This is a bad Saints team. Derek Carr does not look good. Um, he's throwing picks. He's he's making mistakes up and down the field. That being said, the Saints should have won this game because the Falcons are even worse. I had the Falcons winning the division. I think that was a massive mistake. They get a fluky punt return in the end zone, a muffed punt in the end zone that they get for a touchdown. Super fluky. Still wasn't enough for them to win. They also got a pick six, by the way. Kirk Cousins did not throw a single touchdown pass. Kirk Cousins looked really bad. He looked awful. I mean, let's let's be completely honest. Kirk Cousins has had half of a good game this season, and or I guess two halves. He had a good second half against Philly, and he had a good first half against the Chiefs. So he had two good halves out of four. It it, it has not looked good for him. Um, And in the meantime, you're seeing the Saints. The Saints, they they kind of got their mojo back as far as the run game, but Rashid Shahid can't catch a contested ball to save his life. Rashid Shahid, super fast, love the guy. He can't get any separation, though. And when, when he is in... Single coverage. Derek Carr, his favorite thing to do is to throw it up to Rashid Shahid, and Shahid just can't catch contested balls. He can't. I've seen like 12 times Derek Carr throws up a contested ball to Shahid, and Shahid misses it. Like, they need a Michael Thomas, and they don't have a Michael Thomas. Whatever happened to Michael Thomas, by the way? I feel like, is he still on the team? Like, Michael Thomas, what, what, what happened to that guy? But, and again, Chris Olave, great receiver. Thomas is, or uh, Alave is better at, at getting open, but he's also not going to catch those contested balls. So when, I guess he's a free agent. Um, interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's tough for me because I wanted the Falcons to be good. They're just not. They're not a good team. Um, they won their last drive. How'd they win their last drive? They were down by two. No, down by one. And they got a P.I. call that put them into field goal range. If not for a P.I. call, they would have lost that game. And it's still, they get into field goal range, three and out, 
Kirk Cousins literally couldn't get them a single extra yard. So Young Way Koo had to nail a 58 yarder, which was his career high. To his credit, he did nail it. But that's not a reliable way to win. If not for a fluky, very fluky drive against the Eagles and a PI call plus a muffed punt plus a career high, a career long field goal for Young Way Kim. That was that would be they'd be 0 and 4. Three fluky plays, 0 and 4. It's that I mean that it's it's that close to them. So I don't think they're a legitimate threat in that division anymore. Could they win a wild card? Maybe. I don't see it. Kirk looks bad. Kirk looks old. So does Derek Carr. That was not a battle of contenders. That was a battle of two teams that kind of suck. Let's talk about the other undefeated team in football, Packers-Vikings, man. That, that was a game. That was a real good game, a, a great football game. Minnesota at 4-0. Is it finally over, though? Because the second half, they were up 31. No, they were up 28 nothing, and they barely won 31-29. The the Packers made it super close. And we saw the second half, Minnesota fell apart. Sam Darnold looked amazing in the first half. First half, he looked like an MVP candidate. Three touchdowns, 140 yards, 9 for 12, up 28 nothing. He was incredible. After that, he imploded, he threw a pick, couldn't score, couldn't move the ball. So... Is the Sam Darnold thing finally up? I guess we'll see. I'll tell you what. They get the Jets next week. That's not going to be easy. Uh, and looking at the Vikings schedule, this, they can. I mean, they, they certainly can make the playoffs. But it, it doesn't get a whole lot easier. They get, the Jets will be tough, I think. I think they can win that game, though. Then the bye. Then it's Detroit. Then the Rams, who might be easier than we thought this year. Colts. Jaguars and Titans is two easy ones. Then Chicago, Arizona. I don't know how to feel about either of those teams. Atlanta, who I just said is not that good. Chicago again. Seattle, who we'll see about. Green Bay, Detroit. I think they can make the playoffs. I don't think they're the best team in their division, though. Because I think Green Bay wins that game if Jordan Love wasn't unhealthy in the first half. I mean, he threw two picks in the first half. If not for Jordan Love's interceptions in the first half, they win that game. Look at this, a missed 37-yard field goal that went off the, uh, I mean, if he makes that kick, Green Bay wins the game. And you could say maybe they don't. Maybe the Vikings play with more urgency, sure. But the point is, there's a lot of things that broke poorly for Green Bay early, and I think the next time they play, I would, I would take Green Bay to win, and I'd probably take Green Bay to, to, to cover. So I, I, I think Green Bay is a better football team. Out of all the 2-2 two and two teams, Green Bay looks the best. And out of all the 4-0 four and four, four and o teams, Minnesota probably looks the worst. That, that, that's how, I mean, and of course, it's only two. But still, I, I just, I don't know. Minnesota, 4-0, I'm not sold yet because they, I think they got outplayed by Green Bay in the second half. And I think the honeymoon with Sam Darnold might be over. I think... The Jets are going to play a tough defense on Darnold. I think Sauce Gardner is going to shut down Justin Jefferson. So we're going to see what does Darnold look like when he can't just give it to Jefferson all the time. I don't know. I, and also against his former team, it'll, that'll be interesting to see, a Darnold revenge game. But the, the Jets also need a win. They're desperate. The Vikings are not desperate. So I could see them losing to the Jets, and I could see this thing starting to fall apart. We've seen Sam Darnold ha put together great three-game stretches before. We've never seen him put together a great half a season before. So that's kind of the next question is, can they do this consistently? And I think the fall, the collapse that they had in the second half, I think they're going to fall apart. Based off of watching that second half, Green Bay dominated them so much in the second half. I don't see, a, 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 I don't think Minnesota's a better team than Green Bay. I think Green Bay, if Jordan Love was, was healthy, the week prior, because he looked rusty early in the game. He threw a couple picks. If, if he wasn't rusty, Green Bay wins that game. If they make a kick, Green Bay wins that game. Um, yeah, I, I feel pretty confident about Green Bay as a playoff team. I still, and I do think the Vikings will make the playoffs as well. I think those, that's a battle of two playoff teams. 
Dude, the NFC North's good division, man. Nobody's below 500 in the North. Good division. How about the Jets and Broncos, man? The Broncos look kind of good. Got to say, that defense looks good. And again, we're seeing the flaws of the Jets' O-line. But Aaron Rodgers looked washed. And I hate this because last week he looked like he was back and I was all excited. I said, he's back, he's back. The bad man himself, Aaron Rodgers, is back. Aaron Rodgers looked washed. He couldn't move the ball at all. And I get it. There were penalties. It was a bad O-line. The Broncos' defense was balling out. You cannot lose a game 10-9 to at home against a rookie quarterback when he throws for 60 yards. I mean, it was that, that was just a terrible performance by the Jets. And his receivers weren't doing him any favors. But Rodgers has a habit of throwing to a spot. And there's multiple times in that game when he threw to a spot and the receiver just wasn't there. And it's like, yeah, I get it. That's the play. But you got to have the awareness to look and make sure the guy is in the right spot. And Rodgers wasn't doing that. Um, and he, he just, he looked old. He looked rusty and old and a little bit washed. And he lost 10-9 to at home, and that was a game they had to win. Schedule gets tough from here. They have to play the Jets. No, the, uh, the Jets play the Vikings. Good team. The Bills, good team. Um, and the Steelers, good team. They got to win at least one of those. They Realistically, they'd love to win two. If you're two and five, you're out of it. If you're three and four, you can come back. But I was so high on this Jets team, and it just that was a depressing letdown of a, of a football game. And I, can't, I couldn't tell you right now. Are they a playoff team? I don't know. I would probably... Ah, probably air on the side of no right now. So for as much as I love the defense, as much as I love Rodgers' ability to, to be accurate, and as much as I love their playmakers, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, they just don't have the firepower, they don't have the bandwidth, they don't have the O-line, bad coaching, and I don't think Aaron is going to be good enough to, to carry the team on his back. It's sad watching legends die out. It's sad watching the people we grew up with lame out like this. But it is part of life. It is part of the game. And it does happen. So the Colts beat the Steelers. And it's funny the, the way that different people saw this game. There has always been in the NFL. And I don't know if it's, it's an Ohio State thing or if it's because they want they they just want to be right about him because they were high on him in the draft. There is a massive group of both fans and analysts and, and radio heads, talking people, journalists. There's a massive group who so badly want Justin Fields to be a big thing. You know, like like when he was on the Bears, it was always... Fields, 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 and you, we always kind of tell he was just wasn't that good on the Bears, but they were always trying to make it feel like he was better than he was. Well, it's it's the O line, it's the coaching. It, there's always an excuse, right? And then it was well, maybe the Bears should keep Fields and not draft Caleb, and and we're already seeing, you know, did they make a mistake? That's that that narrative has come out. And then he gets the Steelers, and it was oh, he's got to start, right? Oh, he's better than Russ, and then. Russ gets hurt, and now he is, and that group of people, from them, they watched this game and said, well, he, he scored three touchdowns, he threw for 300 yards, he, he's earned it to be the starter. And for me, what I saw in this game was Justin Fields made some pretty bad mistakes. The Steelers had every opportunity to win this game. Justin Fields... Turned the ball over, I believe, three times. Um, the fumble was terrible. You know, the, like, the fumble was just bad. Um, I want to make sure I'm right about this. Okay, so he didn't throw a pick. But did he fumble twice? He rushed for two touchdowns. That's the other thing. Two of his touchdowns were rushing touchdowns. And I get it. He's a dynamic rusher. He's never proven himself as a great passer. And they lost to, I mean, they lost to Joe Flacco. 
So what I saw was I saw a quarterback that, yeah, he has potential and yes, he can run. But look, that was a bad throw. Um, and, and Fields was struggling. Um, he went down early to his credit. He, he did his best to lead him on a comeback, and I thought he looked a lot better in the second half. But the fumble when they were down by three was really bad. And that's not something that I don't think Russell Wilson would allow that to happen. So my take from the game was, yeah, Fields is good. He's talented. I would start Russell Wilson next week against Dallas Cowboys. I think, and, and the idea again, the idea is Fields has all this upside that Russell Wilson doesn't have. I don't really buy it. Yes, Fields is a better runner, but the key ultimately to winning is to play clean football for the Steelers. Don't turn the ball over. Because the defense is going to win you most of your games. Which quarterback turns the ball over more? Fields, right? And we saw the turnover that hurt them badly. Russ doesn't turn the ball over. That was his whole thing. And one of the critiques of Russ was that he's too safe with the football. That he's too willing to take a sack or to throw it away um, or to check it down. That he doesn't go for the big play. That was the big... I mean, Russ led the league last year in touchdown to interception ratio. Led the league. And he, and he got benched because Peyton thought that he was not doing enough and he was too safe with the football. That was one of the reasons Peyton didn't like him. For the Steelers, that works perfectly. Just don't turn the ball over. Play solid, sound football. I get it. We all want Justin Fields to be great. At some point, the answer is he's not that good. And I think Wilson, I think Russ is better. So I would start Russ next week. I, I don't know if they will. I think they're going to start Justin Fields. But I, I have a feeling that if they start to lose, like winning three games when you really only did had one good game, like remember, Fields didn't have a great first game or a great second game. They won their first two games because of the defense. Fields has had about one good game and a good half against, the second half against the Colts was pretty good, but I don't think he's earned it yet. And I would, I would start the veteran. And this hat on my head, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I want to see Russell Wilson play football again. But I don't know. Am I missing something with Fields? Uh, so how about the Commanders? Boy, do they look good, right? Um, 42 to 14. They just can't stop scoring. And, and Jaden Daniels looks like everything he was at LSU and more. Cliff Kingsbury has that offense rolling. I mean, I've, I've seen good Commanders teams in the past, but this might be the best Commanders team I've ever seen. They're 3-1. and one. They look unstoppable. They have not punted. They went, I believe it was 16, 16 drives without punting or turning the ball over. Jaden Daniels, he's an early MVP candidate, early Rookie of the Year candidate. Looks so good. And that is the, maybe the best offense in the NFL. This is 2018 Chiefs. That's what this looks like. This, this looks like the Mahomes Chiefs in 2018 when it was out of nowhere and it was Oh my goodness, this is incredible. This is a high-powered offense, and they're going to need it because their defense, I don't think, is, any, is all that good. Despite Dan Quinn, but I'll tell you what. When they need a stop, they can get a stop. We saw that against Cincinnati. They can bring pressure. This is a good football team. They're going to win the East. I'm, a, I'm on board. They're going to win the East. And I wish I would have been on board because I said in the... Preseason and when we did predictions, I said I think they're gonna make some noise, but I'm not ready to say they're a playoff team. I had them at eight and nine. No, this is a they're gonna win eleven or twelve games. They're gonna win the division. They're gonna win a playoff game or two. This is a good football team. I mean, Jaden Daniels might win Super Bowls. This is this I, I'm I'm probably overreacting. Come on, let's be honest. I'm probably overreacting, but it looks really good, man. The other rookie quarterback also won, and, and let's give Caleb Williams his flowers. He looked better than Matt Stafford. He, he, he outplayed Matt Stafford. Stafford looked old. He looked 
out of whack. He looked like he didn't have answers for the Bears' defense. He was getting sacked. He was throwing the ball into it's very dangerous, and he ends up throwing a game-costing interception late in the game. Um, but yeah, credit to Caleb, man. Did he look great? No. But he did what he needed to do. He threw a touchdown, didn't turn the ball over, and his Bears get the win. 24-18, they're back to 2-2, two and two, 500 football team. I still think when Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua come back, this Rams team can be good. But right now at 1-3, and three, and Stafford has not played well this season. Stafford has played, he, he'll put together a good drive, but the awareness, I thought, I think is not as sharp. The accuracy is not as sharp. He's throwing picks. He's always thrown picks. He's not putting up the big touchdown numbers, though, to go with the picks. And I think that at some point, he may need to start thinking about retiring. Like he's 36, one of the older guys in the league. It doesn't feel like he can carry the team like he used to be able to do. It doesn't feel like he's not a guy who can throw for 400 yards and three touchdowns. At least we haven't seen that from him in a while. And to be fair, there haven't really been any quarterbacks doing that this year. This is a rushing league. It's a running league. And I don't know how Stafford fits into that. But the Bears get the win. And the Rams, who they were my pick to win the NFC West. I'm struggling to stand with that right now. I'm not fully off the, the, the train, though. I think they need to get healthy. They need to get healthy quick. So Andy Dalton got his shot at revenge against the Bengals. Panthers looked competent again. They looked competent on offense, uh, but ultimately fall 34-24, fall to 1-3, and three, two games back in the division against the Bucks. Meanwhile, the Bengals finally winning a game. Burroughs played well in pretty much all of their games, except for the Patriots game week one. Um, they were due for a win. And I think they're going to get back into it. I don't know if they're a playoff team. I don't know if they'll get to the playoffs. But they're going to be in the mix. Uh, Carolina, they, they took a big swing on this fourth and goal. Had they scored a touchdown there, I almost think the, the strategy should have been to just let Dalton run it. Had they scored a touchdown there, um, they, could, may, they would have been closer. They still wouldn't have won. But they may have been able to tie it. Because they had the ball down 10, and they were in field goal range. But they, they didn't kick the field goal. They went for it. And, but it was, it was neither, yeah, neither team looked amazing. But I thought both quarterbacks looked sound. Burrow looked sound, looked good. Um, and I think this offense, as they get healthier, they're, they're going to be able to win some games. But like I said, 0-3 is a tough hole to dig out of. So even if they win eight or nine games, if they go, they're one and three right now, so they can only afford about four more losses. So they have, they have thirteen more games. If they go eight and five in their next thirteen, that's probably not good enough. So they they really don't have much margin for error anymore. We've seen this Bengals team be dominant, and I think they can be, but it's a tough league, and right now they're among the bottom feeders at one and three. They have to get back into it. And that's on Burrow, and yesterday was a big first step. Minshew, man, winning another one. To be fair, it was against a not very good Browns team, but still, Raiders are 2-2, two and two, making noise in the wild card early on in the season. And it's that Minshew magic. I don't know, how far can he take them? They can beat the bad teams. They're going to beat the Chiefs? Probably not. Can they beat the Chargers? Maybe. Can they beat Denver? I think they can. Um, Cleveland, I cannot believe. They, may, they probably should have signed Joe Flacco. I'm about ready to say they should just bench Deshaun and start Jameis Winston. Because they have, they have playmakers. They have good players. They have a good defense. Miles Garrett is good. Nick Chubb when he gets back. This is a, they, they have playmakers, man. They shouldn't be a losing team. At least they shouldldn't be this bad. They look like a five win team with Deshaun at quarterback. And again, Deshaun just looks bad. He looks like he's not willing to put his body in the line. Deshaun feels like 
he got paid and immediately checked out. And that's a tough reality that the Browns have to face. And sure, he celebrates when they score, but man, you just lost to the Giants and the Raiders. You're a bad team. 